Hey there, good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm your host today, Josh Ellsworth, and we're excited that you've decided to, to join us on this Monday morning. Uh, all of my friends are gone. Some of them have worked trade shows, some of them are customer visits, uh, etc. So I'm rolling solo today, but I know you're there with me and you'll have tons of questions throughout today's presentations. And I do have a ton uh, to talk to you about still. So make sure you shout out exactly where you're watching from. Uh, be very active in today's presentation. Uh, let me know if you have any questions throughout because we have a, a pretty cool topic. It's all about finding and winning new customers. That's going to be the meat of the presentation today. Uh, I've prepared some slides to walk you through just to give you some ideas uh, off the cuff on how you might find new customers, give you a, a new way to grow the business perhaps uh, for the rest of this year. And really, uh, if you found the customers, some real tactics on how to win uh, the customers over. But before we get to all of that, uh, we want to go through our standard announcements here and really announce uh, an upcoming workshop that's coming to our locations. This is our workshop Wednesday, which happens on a Wednesday uh, sometime throughout each month across the country at all of our locations. So whether you're in Florida, California, Arizona, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, or Texas, we have a location that's worth traveling to. And our schedule for March is all about vinyl cutting. We have a vinyl cutter boot camp on the Roland GS24 and also the Graftech CE6000. And we also have a heat transfer vinyl 101 and 201 class on March 13th and 14th. So if you've invested in a vinyl cutter, uh, it's a great couple days to come learn more about the vinyl cutter or even if you're looking to invest to learn what the vinyl cutter can do get some hands-on training on that particular device and then get some ideas in that heat transfer vinyl 101 and 201 class on the types of things you can make with heat transfer vinyl on a vinyl cutter i'm sure everyone will walk away with new sales ideas and opportunities in order to grow their business so we have people watching everywhere from wow bangladesh to north carolina to Tennessee, and where else? California, Miami, uh, Ottawa. Good, all over the place. So we appreciate you tuning in and shouting out where you're watching from. Uh, we wanna go to some uh, looks of the week, and I'm excited to roll this first one out because it's somebody that already said hi this morning. So how are you today, Mike? Guess what, you got look of the week today. Uh, we're doing a few looks. This one really stood out to me for a couple reasons. Number one, is Mike used uh, Premium Plus High Tack, which the CAD Cut Premium Plus is a product that we've been, uh, we've reformulated and we've been promoting because with the High Tack version, you can do a little finer detail than you could with the previous uh, version. And you can also hot peel on the garment. It's still the same soft look and feel on the garment. And uh, you can create some great looks. You can see all types of placements and layering with this, which I really like. I'm especially liking the uh, the bottom uh, placement there that you see, I think that's on the back or the front of the hoodie. Either way, it looks nice across the pocket or across the very back of the hoodie. And you can see a nice uh, full down the sleeve print uh, with a cool graphic making full use of all the potential customization zones. I imagine that uh, this is a, uh, a very profitable job because there's a lot of locations, a lot of placement, a lot of work that went into this. So nice work, Mike. Let's take a look at our next look from Suzanne. Uh, I had to pick this one too because uh, a couple reasons. It's all CAD cut glitter flake. You see what looks like a layered uh, look on the back or the front of those long sleeve tees, but really I'm guessing this is either a gap outline or a trapping effect since we don't want to layer glitter on glitter. But you can create your artwork in such a way where the glitter looks layered but still comes in contact with the garment, which I think uh, is an awesome way to do it. Also, you're seeing the use of another sleeve print. So printing long sleeves and, and pant legs is a popular uh, application spot. Make the most of your heat press with some of these zones. And then we see the, um, I think it's called a sash. Is that right, Taylor? Yeah. A sash, she said, yeah, so I'll go with it. Um, going across and being able to decorate uh, polyester or even satin uh, sashes with customization is a great opportunity that maybe you haven't thought of before. Uh, you can think of a lot of different ways where this can be uh, valuable. And then last but not least, Tracy May, and we have a personalized, uh, looks like the pouch of a bag. Once again, a unique print location that requires special tools for the job. Why I really like this one is it's a mixed media with three different products. So the unicorn is done in express print, which is a print and cut heat transfer material that can load into a Roland 
uh, Versacam or any solvent or eco solvent printer for creating a full color graphic like that unicorn. And then she has combined that with uh, fashion film that you see on the background of the Stevenson name and glitter flake on top of fashion film. So that also shows you that you can mix and match materials even on tough print locations. Glitter flake in this case can be layered on top of other products, just not on top of itself. So I thought you might be able to learn a little bit from each of these uh, different looks. So we have folks watching from Kentucky, from Pittsburgh. We're broadcasting live from just south of Pittsburgh, in case you didn't know that, in the Uniontown area where our Stalls TV offices are located. So that was a mouthful already. So let's get into our uh, core topic today, which is five ways to find and win new customers. But before we get into the PowerPoint, I want to walk through a couple, uh, a few actually prerequisites before you start talking about finding any customers or winning any customers. And that really is identifying your ideal customer. And so when I say that, uh, with where we're at today with, with the way you can find and the way you can win customers and how competitive uh, the market can be in certain instances, you really need to identify who is your customer. Before you can source product, create a business plan, create a winning strategy, you have to figure out what is the target, what are you going after. So if you're able to identify uh, your ideal customer, and it could be, um, there could be a few different ideal customers that you craft different plans for, but I definitely recommend that you segment uh, your customers, identify the ones that you'll want to reach, and then uh, go through a list and talk about what is that particular customer that you may want to target or that you know can be successful for your business? What are some of the things that they value? Um, what are some of their pain points, uh, the likes and dislikes? Because what we're going to work to do is after we identify the customer is to craft an offer. So when you're thinking of a specific customer type, you can get more specific about the offer. So we know what they dislike and what they value from an apparel supplier, from customized goods, decorate apparel, whatever service it is you're providing really in any industry, not just in the world of heat printing, uh, but you can start to create something that's going to resonate with that customer. And what this is going to allow you to do, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to increase your conversion rate when you can tailor that offer to a specific customer type and have it uh, deliver value that they care about. So it's going to increase your conversion rate, which is going to shorten your sales cycle as well. And it's also going to diminish the price pressure. And so I've mentioned this many times on here before, but when we look at any research and feedback that's been given from companies that are generalists that do a bunch of different things and don't have a specific market, a specific target, what you find is they often cite uh, price. Um, as a big determining factor for why they lose jobs. They find themselves uh, competing into what we would call the red ocean, where there's a lot of sharks swimming around, a lot of competitive apparel decorators that are all vying after the same customer type. So when you're thinking of your customer, uh, the one that you want to grow your business with, that you want to find, that you want to win, when you're specifying that offer, start to think of spaces that, that are a little bit more wide open. Um, the book Blue Ocean Strategy kind of outlines this uh, very well. You start to think of uncontested market space that starts to allow you to grow the business without the price pressure, without the, the same competitive pressures, and really enjoy uh, some profitable business growth, which is really important for staying open and uh, excelling in the business. So before you get started, we want to identify your ideal customer. We want to craft a specific offer that's going to be tailored to them. And then thirdly, we want to uh, figure out the best way to communicate uh, the offer, meaning where does that specific customer shop? Uh, where are they located? Where can I come in contact with them? Whether that's a business to business, whatever it may be. And that's where we're going to be able to communicate our offer in the most effective way. And that really uh, leads us into our first grouping of slides here, which are uh, five different ways um, to find new customers. So the first way, and I'm going to uh, go through these fairly quickly because I want to share a lot of ideas and, and maybe a few of them will stick uh, with you. That's the goal. So the first way I want to talk through is uh, referrals. So one great way to find a new customers, uh, to find new customers is from a referral. So 
What I mean by that is you already do business probably with uh, potentially hundreds of existing customers um, that are happy with your products and services that have reordered. When was the last time you asked those customers for a referral? So one of the easiest things to do, one of the easiest ways to find another customer is ask that client. Sometimes when you deliver the goods and that customer is happy with the finished product, um, that they've received, you could ask the question, would you know anybody else that would be interested in receiving product or product quality or customized goods like this? Often that end client is engaged and networked um, in circles and in, in uh, spheres of influence that you aren't in directly. So just being able to ask the question uh, for them to do a favor for you and say, would you know of anybody else that may be interested um, in this type of product that you happen to engage with, whether that's at a sports tournament or a, a dance competition or whatever it may be, odds are they're connected in a way that you aren't and they can perhaps not only pass across a name to you, but you can also leverage that and ask for an introduction. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea and somebody that would be interested in us. Would you mind introducing with me, introducing them to me so perhaps I can make a uh, free sample or something like that for them. So the number one way um, that I have here to find new customers is ask your current customers for a referral. It's an easy one. Second is networking. So get out and be seen. So those same events and tournaments or uh, competitions or wherever your current customer is existing, maybe it's at a, at a career fair. If you target uh, small businesses, maybe going to a local career fair is a great way um, to go and engage with companies that are hiring, that are growing their business, that you can uh, sell stuff to. So networking uh, is sometimes a difficult process uh, for people, but it's an important one to growing the business. So making sure you have uh, business cards, head out to these networking events, um, just get yourself out there, whether that's uh, by joining a local chamber of commerce and connecting with other business owners in the community, uh, but get comfortable with introductions. Um, whenever you introduce yourself to somebody, you're out at a networking event, you should have a business card in hand that's a pretty typical exchange, and you should get comfortable talking about what your business does. So a lot of folks would call this the elevator pitch, what your business can do in you know, 30 seconds, or some people say two minutes is that elevator pitch. But instead of uh, focusing specifically on uh, what that business does uh, for you selfishly, um, talk about what you're able to do for the client that buys your product from you. That uh, explaining it in those words, um, in the clients from a client's perspective, especially if you're networking within the community of the target audience, the target customer that you've identified, being able to uh, deliver that story in a succinct amount of time and leveraging that over into a business card exchange or at least a swapping of, of phone numbers or contact details is a great way to get out there and find new customers. So networking, get out and be seen. Thirdly, prospecting. And uh, this one's uh, one of my favorites with the power of the internet and the power of search these days. It's very easy to find a defined list of customers that you want to do business with. So for instance, if my, if my product and my offer that I've crafted happen to resonate with, uh, let's just say, uh, fitness, um, that sort of fitness community. Odds are I can get onto Google, Google Maps, or even on my phone uh, on the Maps app, and I can search for gyms or yoga studios or whatever it may be in my area. And typically what I'll do is I'll be able to find a hit list within an X mile radius and then I can type in different zip codes if I want to kind of conquer different areas and go out and, and make sales calls into different areas. But you can typically find a list, you can get onto uh, Facebook, you can often uh, cut through some of the clutter of the email inbox and send a message through Facebook or like a page or send an introduction. Um, prospect. Find these contacts that you want to do business with. Instead of sending just a templated email, actually spend a couple minutes, do a little bit of research on who they are, what they care about on the website, and then send an introduction. So being able to find new customers online uh, is a great way, and I recommend these sort of radius searches by starting with the zip code and then finding, uh, in this case, gyms or studios that are within that radius. This works for doctor's offices. This works for um, 
dance studios, it works for uh, schools, uh, pretty much any, anything you can think of. If you go on to a local map search, you can build up a prospect list very easy. As long as you understand what you're searching for, you've crafted your offer specifically to them, you can now go out and you can communicate that offer direct to them. And sometimes uh, picking up the phone and making a phone call, although it's intimidating, uh, that doesn't happen a lot anymore, especially from someone that's not a telemarketer. So having that just normal interaction, calling them, letting them know that you've looked at their website site and you would like to schedule an appointment or getting to the next step um, is an important thing. So prospecting, the power of search, use it to your advantage to find new customers. Fourth, targeted advertising. So this is sort of the, um, the other side of the coin where instead of us going out and finding the customer, what we're doing is we are setting up campaigns that will allow the customer to find us easier. So there's a couple different ways. You can do this through pretty much any social media platform that I know of or any uh, search engine that I know of. So uh, we're talking two different things here. So in search, when you look at something like uh, Google AdWords, when somebody is searching for customized apparel or decorated apparel or whatever it is, the term that you're going to uh, go after, you can uh, put together a keywords campaign um, sign up for an account with Google and now when somebody searches for that, your information comes up in the sponsored ads. So there's a lot of people, it's no secret, um, search marketing and keyword advertising has been around for many, many years now, but it's still uh, extremely effective, especially if you can get very specific um, with who that customer is and what they're searching for and what area you want to target the business in. So if you start, um, I'll just say, if you, if you sell to different campuses and communities, and let's say we wanted to sell into um, LSU, um, what we can do is we can start to render um, images and advertisements that kind of speak to them with their purple and gold colorways, uh, whatever it may be. So you want to get as specific that you can with the offer. This is going to help you when you're doing uh, marketing. AdWords advertising, where you can not only pick the search terms, but the different geographical areas that you're going to render that ad to. It's going to make for a better connection, and it's also going to help you help your money uh, to stretch farther with what you'll pay uh, per click. And then similarly, uh, on the social side, I know Facebook advertising is uh, really popular, where we can now uh, render ads based off of profile information. So if you're a small business that does maybe personalized shirts and you say, my customer is going to be somebody um, when they are celebrating uh, a birthday or when they're celebrating um, an anniversary or something like that. All of um, the Facebook uh, profile information is of course housed by Facebook, but we can uh, gear up campaigns that are based around everything from pages that people like and are affiliated with to you know, to their birthdays, to what sex they are, to when they were born, their age range. So if you think about who that customer is, we can really target um, specific information and put together a nice Facebook campaign that may have a short video clip um, accompanied with it where we're boosting a post or a video, or it could be an event that we want to have that we're promoting. So it's a really powerful way uh, to find new customers is uh, through setting up these specific targeted advertising campaigns, whether that's on social or search. Okay, and then for the fifth one that I want to share with you, it's all about partnering. So if you think about that customer you've identified and where else they shop, we can partner with a complementary business that's serving the same customer. So I put this into something easy to understand is like a restaurant may partner with a brewery that has um, similar interests, that they're not competing, but they're complementary uh, in what they offer. And so some ways you can think about this as an apparel decorator is perhaps there is an event that happens. Maybe there's a, a, a heart walk or something that the American Heart Association puts on, or maybe there's uh, some kind of walk for a cause. What if you reached out to the event coordinators and offered to do personalization on site at those events and you did it at a really attractive price? It's not necessarily about making, a money, making the money specifically at that event, but it's coming in contact with all the potential buyers that may be attending the event. So start to think about where else are your customers engaging at? Where are they shopping at? Where are they throughout the day? And that is a great way to set up and maybe do some event-based marketing, do a co-op, uh, a partnership 
where you can go in with another uh, like like-minded uh, business or organization and offer some value uh, to their clients. So uh, being able to partner. So I'm going to pause for a few minutes. I know I'm not getting many questions because of the nature of this presentation. I'm just doing a lot of talking here, but I see people still shouting out that. Uh, we have uh, folks watching from Kansas and a couple from Chicago, which is great. Uh, Virginia, I just see some general good morning. So good morning to everybody. And we've just went through, if you're just joining us, um, this will be available for playback once the live broadcast has concluded because we are broadcasting live. We went through five ways to find new customers. And now we're getting ready to turn over to five different uh, tactics to win new customers. And then I'm going to pause afterwards for some uh, Q&A after we go through this section. Hi, Rebecca from Alabama. Good to have you on as well. So let's go. Uh, winning new customers now. Let's look at those top five. So we talked about this a bit earlier, but I want to uh, go a little bit more specific. So once you find the customers, um, this we're really helping you uh, come up with the offer in this case, or in some cases, overcome objections. So the first thing is create something compelling. So I'll ask you a question. Is there a creative way that you can get that first order without compromising the future business? So a lot of businesses would call this uh, a loss leader. So it is um, kind of a, a marketing expense when you think about it. So many of you may have seen the company that did the $5 polo shirt with free embroidery. So that was a, a loss leader for that business. I can't think of any way that they were actually making uh, profitability on that garment. They were probably losing it. But what that w allowed them to do was put around it an internet advertising campaign to be able to draw in a customer with a compelling offer. So it's just a marketing expense. Even if they lost $5 on the polo shirt, the idea is that they were willing to pay the dollar for the click-through and they wanted to make sure that click-through resulted in a conversion so they could get the client's information. And so they structured something where they had a loss leader that they can bring the client into the business. And then once you have the client in the business, it's so much easier. It's a documented fact that you're able to sell more to existing clients than going out and finding new ones. So is there some way outside of your normal offer that you can create something compelling that attracts new entrants into your book of business so you can open them up to the rest of the offer? So a lot of people view their team uniform business even for local ligs as a way just to get to the parents and the fan gear in the build, uh, build profitability there. So think about what can be compelling in my offer that doesn't jeopardize the sales of all the future business that actually is a nice uh, feed into everything, I else, everything else I have to offer. Next is personalization makes an impact. And so I have a, um, a story here that I want to talk through. So this sounds general, like heat printing is personalization, of course. And the idea um, of this is that when you are showing samples, rather than showing something generic, if you can show something that is specific to the client, odds are you're going to be able to win that deal at a higher probability than if you showed something generic. So of course, we love to see things come to life with our name on it, or if we're a business with our logo, if we're a team with our team name and our colors. And so um, the best example I can give in this years ago, uh, my wife and I had, had a little side business and we tried to sell to local dance studios. And so we had this um, lace back tank that was really popular at the time. And I said, okay, let's do some A-B testing because that's a really effective way to try things out. Let's send 10 of them out this way, which means they're all gonna have a generic dance school on them. And we're gonna send them to 10 studio owners doing prospecting, included a nice letter about how they could use it as a fundraiser and how they could respond. And then we did 10 that way. And then we did 10 another way where we actually took the time to take the dance studio's uh, colors or at least um, something that was inspired by their colors in their logo and make it specific to them. So 10 personalized tank tops that showed them what we could bring to life for their dance studio. Um, we got two responses out of the 10 that were generic. Um, this is without a follow-up phone call. And we got seven responses out of the one that was personalized. So that's just one example that 
that's just a motion that you can do, is get in the habit of building some time in to personalize sample. There is a little bit more cost to it, but do some testing with your particular customer target and think about how can you uh, grow the business. Perhaps at the end of the day, it would be a lot less expensive because you'd be able to convert more clients um, upfront at the first interaction instead of having to follow up and follow up. So personalization makes an impact. Next is mind the gap. So this is a, a saying, of course, that is from, uh, if you think about the uh, train stations in London, there's usually a sign that says mind the gap where you step between the platform and actually up onto the train. And they're telling you, be careful that you don't trip, that you don't fall in uh, to the gap. And so trying to use this to ask the question is, what is the gap between a customer saying yes and no? Typically, we think of that as an objection. And often, it, when you get into objections, if you start solving them right away, you end up with a lot of objections. And so what I recommend doing is try not to solve any objections until you figure out what is the gap that keeps them from saying yes. Because there's going to be one objection or sometimes coupled together um, a few objections that you're, if you solve, they're willing to move forward today. So rather than just sitting there and answering question after question after question, start thinking about, okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, this is what's keeping you from moving forward with our goods and services without placing your first, or moving forward with us for the team uniforms, whatever it may be. So if we can find a way to overcome this, are you willing to move forward with us? And so that's just a nice, easy way that you can really try to get on the same page with the customer because that's the goal. Understand what's holding them back from a yes, especially if you're in person or over the phone, or even an email, you can ask the question. And if you find out that this is the difference between yes or no, then you can really get um, into whether or not you can solve that challenge. And when you solve it, you have a, a good answer of yes, they're moving forward with the business rather than just going down through the next question on the list. So try to uh, mind the gap, try to get to the only thing that stands between the yes and the no, uh, and solve that and turn it into an order rather than just another objection or another question. Next, overcoming objections. So um, I talked a little bit um, about this, um, but specifically once you identify that objection that keeps them from saying yes, um, often you may choose to overcome this objection and just cave to the request. So if they say something like, you're charging me $22 for that shirt, if you could do it for $18, I'd be willing to move forward, right? You can make the decision to move forward at $18, but odds are um, you're going to continue to have price pressure with that customer moving forward. They're always gonna be trying to negotiate the price. Um, you know it, and I know it. If you've ever subscribed to a service like DirecTV, don't you call them every six months? and try to negotiate your bill down, right? So you're gonna put yourself into that framework where your goods and services are negotiable. And so a couple different things that will help stand up to that. Number one, it's to have uh, defined pricing rules up front. So saying, if you need to be at that $18, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, here's how you get there. And usually that's between um, a, a quantity break or maybe even servicing like a good, better, best and saying, I can get you there, but here's gonna be the style versus this premium style you want. Um, so that's a choice. Um, you, you can do that in the garment or the design style. But also, stories tend to sell. So when, you, when you've hit the sort of brick wall, you can't give any more. You know you can't uh, cave or you can't deliver on the thing that's holding them, that, them back from buying. Um, stories tend to resonate with customers better. And so having some, some good stories, some testimonials of successful customers. You know, here was another customer that originally was concerned about price but they actually, I was able to uh, work with them and get them to move forward at the original price we had, we had set, and here is the result, and here's what that customer has done with us since, and here's why they value um, the experience that they get with us better, whether that's the, the quality and the longevity of the garment uh, that's being delivered, or whether it's just the creativity that you put into future designs and really building their brand and logo. So think about what you're actually trying to accomplish for the customer. Um, think about what objections you'll have before they come and have some good stories uh, in the back of your mind or even print it out where you can share that with the customer to overcome those objections without necessarily um, subjecting yourself to less margins or, or the things that start to 
uh, build a deteriorating customer base and profit margin that, that can make the business fail. All right. And last but not least, number five is I call this charming persistence. I started with not being annoying, but being persistent. So and uh, charming persistence was a nice way to sum this up. Um, so often the person that responds the quickest and follows up the most without being annoying wins the business. So making sure when you get an inquiry uh, to any of these ways you're trying to find new customers or get a contact, try to make something special about your sales experience. Maybe it's you text them the day after you got the contact, thanking them for their interest, not trying to sell them anything right away, and just letting them know that you're here and giving them a taste of that level of service that you provide. And then uh, when you're in the stage where they are thinking about whether they move forward or don't move forward with their deal, just being able to follow up, being able to set check-in points and get permission uh, to follow up and being persistent um, in a way that's not annoying helps you win a deal. You don't want to look desperate here, but you want to pivot this and make sure it's in such a way where it looks like you want to make sure you can deliver on that date that the customer is expecting. And that's why you're following up. So making sure you put it in their terms and not your own, but making sure you're persistent and you follow up is also going to help you win uh, customers because usually people will get a lead, they'll have it, um, they'll provide a price quote and often there's not even a follow-up. So you can trust that if somebody's inquired with you for a price on your goods and services, odds are they've inquired at least two other places. So how are you going to differentiate your sales experience from everybody else? Typically it's from responsiveness uh, and follow-up that uh, a client wants to see. All right. So lots of uh, folks watching uh, from different areas. We're coming right up here on our time of 30 minutes, but I want to make sure I stop in case anyone has any uh, follow-up questions. So I'm just going to stay here on the line and take a breath and a drink of water. Good. So a little different uh, morning show this morning. We, we talked a little bit through uh, a few different looks of the week. We talked about finding and winning ideal customers. Um, the whole goal of this particular show is to just try to give you that little push uh, to get out there. I think that's the most important thing out of all of this. It's just thinking deeply about the business, and but not overthinking, making sure at some point you move uh, to action. I think uh, one of the sayings, and I'm sure it's a quote of somebody, I just can't cite the source right now, is uh, perfection is the enemy of progress. So you're never gonna have it all figured out and all perfect. That's what holds you back from moving forward and growing the business but create something that you feel is going to be compelling and then get to work on it. Try it, refine it, um, just get out there and good luck in uh, growing your business. So we'll be back on broadcasting you hopefully with some of my friends here in a couple more weeks. But until then, thanks for watching the Stalls TV Morning Show.